Hello, my name is Irini Polikarpu and I'm the head of the School of Sciences at Uclan Cyprus. I would like to welcome you to today's presentation about the school. Since its establishment, the School of Sciences positioned itself firmly at the forefront of science education and research in Cyprus and abroad. The school's vision is to be recognized as one of the premier science schools locally, regionally and internationally through its cutting-edge research, scholarly activity, innovative programs, outstanding graduates and community involvement. To achieve the school's vision, our strategic development areas are based on three main pillars, which they all need to be gracefully combined together. These three pillars are education, focusing on high-quality education through the offering of innovative programs and curriculum, as well as outstanding student experience and development, Research, focusing on interdisciplinary research projects with wide impact, high quality publications and development of a strong research community. And service and outreach, focusing on the school's engagement with the wider community and transfer of knowledge. There is also a fourth pillar with significant importance to our strategy at all levels, which is the establishment of a strong network of partners and which is a horizontal pillar strengthening each of the three main pillars mentioned. Now some quick information about the School of Sciences. The school has six main disciplines and across these disciplines we offer a total of 11 programs, six undergraduate and five postgraduate programs, which I will present to you shortly. Our faculty includes an outstanding group of scholars, all of whom hold a PhD degree, and they are highly research active, continuously pursuing new knowledge and innovative ways to apply it through research and through their teaching. Also, all our permanent members of academic staff must go through training to become fellows of the UK Higher Education Academy, ensuring that they have the necessary skills to deliver knowledge to the students and engage them with their learning. The majority of our academics are internationally recognized for their knowledge, research output and contributions to the scientific community. Many of them currently hold esteemed appointments on governmental and European Union advisory committees and professional bodies, evidence of the high recognition of their work by the community. A number of them have been invited to deliver guest lectures and keynote speeches at worldwide well-known universities and research events. Beyond their scientific contributions, academics transfer their knowledge to the local community through the organization of specialized seminars and trainings open to the public, especially for pressing matters that may be of concern to the community. Currently, at the undergraduate level, the school offers a BS Honors Computing with optional modules focusing on software engineering, on computer games development and on network technology. MB Eng honors electrical and electronic engineering with optional modules focusing on telecommunications and mobile technologies and on renewable and sustainable energy systems. We also offer a BSc honors in mathematics and statistics, BSc honors in sport and exercise science, and BSc honors in psychology, and a BSc honors in web design and development. At the postgraduate level, we offer MSc Computing with optional modules focusing on IT security and networking, on mobile and web development, and on IT management in business. An MSc in Cybersecurity offered through both conventional delivery and distance learning delivery. An MSc in Data Analytics. An MSc in Forensic Psychology with optional applied practical experience year. And an MSc in Sport and Exercise Science. The School of Sciences is committed to academic excellence and in offering educational services to cater the growing needs of the society. One of the most important aspects, which also differentiates us from many other schools locally, is our methodological approach to curriculum development. There are six main steps we follow, each one of equal importance. These steps involve identification of programs, market investigation, potential program alignment with professional certifications in demand by the industry, and industry partner advice and direction. Program curriculum is also influenced by any discipline standards and teaching and learning methodologies, and it is supplemented by the recruitment of the appropriate academic staff for the delivery of the program. 
It should be noted that step three, professional accreditations and alignment with professional certifications, is highly important for our graduates' employability. Therefore, the school has established several strategically targeted academic partnerships, many of which resulted in providing students with enhanced knowledge and skills through the completion of professional certifications or professional body accreditations and recognitions, which are in high demand by the industry. Of course, even if we develop the most innovative curriculum, it cannot be successful unless it is combined with an effective curriculum delivery. As I mentioned, student employability is a key element for us, so for all of our programs, we ensure that curriculum delivery combines research-informed and industry-informed teaching, which prepares graduates for diverse careers in the international market. Beyond the facilitation of the development of students' course-specific knowledge and skills, all of the school's courses aim at developing students' 21st century and transferable skills, including collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, communication, technology literacy, leadership, independent thinking, self-motivation, professionalism, and ethics. Such skills are considered necessary to succeed in a competitive and diverse global environment. Now, moving beyond the curriculum, we consider beneficial for our students to engage with further activities, which will assist in their personal development as well as their future employability. Whenever appropriate, we try to engage students with discipline-specific activities, such as participation in competitions through the support and coaching by academics, participation in different events or in the organization of local events led by our academics, participation in field trips to industry partners, attendance to guest lecture by industry professionals, and so forth. With regards to industry engagement, beyond the different industry-related curriculum activities that are embedded in students' learning, in almost all of our programs, we offer opportunities for our students to work on real industry projects with real industry clients, especially for their thesis or final year projects. Also, through our extensive network of partners, we secure local and international internships and placements for our students. All our programs are highly practical, no matter of the discipline. They all, in general, include more practical sessions than theoretical sessions, in which students have opportunities to apply their theoretical knowledge with the guidance and support of their instructor. Of equal importance to us is also the engagement of students with research not only at the postgraduate level, but also at the undergraduate level. This is often achieved through the curriculum, uh, such as the research-based thesis projects, or beyond the curriculum, such as participation of students on school research projects. Finally, as you can see here, overall, according to the school's results from the module feedback questionnaires through which our students provide feedback on their learning experience, 90.63% of the students are satisfied with their overall learning experience, and 92.56% of the students are satisfied with the learning support provided to them. With this, I conclude my presentation of the School of Sciences. I would like to thank you for listening. If you are interested to find out more information about the programs offered by the school, you can listen to one of our webinars where our course leaders present each program in more depth. Hello, I'm Dimitri Sersofidis, the course leader of BSc Honors in Mathematics and Statistics, and I'm here to talk to you about this exciting program of studies. I'm sure that the reason you are here watching this presentation is because your answer is yes to some or even all of the questions that you see in this presentation slide. If this is the case, then this is the right course of studies for you. The viewpoints in the previous slide are shared by all mathematicians. The famous probabilist Alfred Rennie's motto was that whenever he feels unhappy, he does mathematics to become happy. And whenever he is happy, he does mathematics to keep happy. So, if you're already feeling excited, then you should consider a career in mathematics. Lots of students and their parents are asking me if once they become mathematicians, their only career pathway is to become a mathematics teacher. This couldn't be further from the truth, 
and it is one of the largest misconceptions still cultivated in our education system. In fact, even mathematics graduates are not always aware of the various opportunities available to them. So here is a list of various areas that mathematicians can be employed. They range from the obvious ones like education, science, engineering, and academic research, to other areas including accountancy, consultancies, and financial services. I'm not going to read all of this, but you can find more details on the webpage www.mathcareers.com. .org.uk, containing also sample lists of organizations in each of these areas which employ mathematicians in the UK. The reason for the multitude of jobs that mathematicians can work in are the many and important skills that one obtains in our mathematics and statistics course. These are skills that occur in most top 10 job skills necessary. So let me start with the obvious skills that you are going to obtain. Numeracy skills and quantitative reasoning refer to the ability to use, interpret, and communicate mathematical information. Such skills are second nature to mathematicians, but surprisingly, lots of people are lacking those skills even in basic settings, such as reading information from simple statistical diagrams. Every mathematician also has analytical skills. You will be able to understand and derive meaning from data, be able to have a clear thinking, increase your attention to detail, be able to construct logical arguments, and also expose illogical arguments. You will also be able to follow complex reasoning. There is nothing better than a degree in mathematics to teach you analytical skills. These are complemented by problem-solving skills. You will be able to formulate a problem precisely and follow a logical approach from the known to the unknown. In high school, you often learn to apply procedure, but at university, you will learn to also apply your knowledge to unknown situations. This includes cultivating your investigative skills. After working on a problem, you might find out that you need to learn new material. Traditionally, this meant looking up textbooks in your university library. Nowadays, there is a wealth of information readily available in the web. From this vastness of information, you will learn to extract the relevant information. Just learning or being able to find new information, though, is not enough. You will need to be able to apply it, and your analytical skills obtained, i.e. your ability to think, will be invaluable to that. Okay, so let's continue with other skills that you will obtain in our mathematics degree. Being IT literate is of utmost importance nowadays. During your mathematics and statistics course, not only you will have to use general computing skills, but we will go beyond that, with specific modules in the use of mathematical and statistical software, like MATLAB, SPSS, R, which are used in the industry. This will include some basic programming skills, which can be further enhanced by taking elective module from the computing course. So usually, students coming from high school lack communication skills. In fact, they often complain to their high school teachers when pressed to explain their arguments. At Wynn University, we'll kill emphasis here, as communication skills are of utmost importance in the job market. It is not enough to just solve the problem, but you should be able to communicate your solution in a clear and understandable way. Here, you will be able to obtain this skill. Furthermore, specific modules will demand writing essays, giving all our presentations of your work, etc. Any university degree also helps you develop good working habits. You will have deadlines to submit your assignments and you will learn to plan your work and manage your time. Sometimes you will have to work and thrive through pressure, just like in the real world. You will be given assignments where you will have to work independently, but you will also have group projects in order to learn to work in a team. All of these are valuable transferable experience that you can and will have to use later in your life. You will also develop as a personality. You will become more creative and have more confidence in yourself. Solving difficult mathematical problems needs persistence and determination. And determination. Mathematicians don't give up. To signify the importance of perseverance in mathematics, mathematician Raoul Bott 
said that there are two ways to do great mathematics. The first is to be smarter than everybody else. But there is a second way as well. Being stupider than everybody else, but persistent, you can also do great mathematics. We already mentioned that the traditional ways of obtaining information have changed. We are now living in the information age. There is a plethora of readily available information in the web. The difficulty now is to be able to manage and process this data within a reasonable time. Traditional data processing applications are often incapable of dealing with this, and one needs more and more the power of statistical tools to handle this difficulty. The terminology in big data was used for the first time in 1997 to describe this phenomenon. By 2002, the amount of digital stored information exceeded, for the first time, the amount of non-digital stored information. Such data grows faster and faster because our, beyond our wildest imagination. So, given the importance of handling big data, our degree gives a strong emphasis on statistics. So typically, statisticians start with the problem to be addressed and decide what data needs to be collected. Then they design processes for collecting the data and either collect it or train others to do so. Once the data has been collected, they analyze it, interpret it, find patterns with it, etc. Finally, they report their conclusions from their analysis in a way that can be clearly understood by the non-statisticians interested in the original problem. So, having described the main tasks of a statistician, let us point out that statistics is essentially used everywhere. Businesses use statistics in decision-making in order to take fast and accurate decisions. Economics is entirely independent of statistics. Studying the relation between demand and supply, between imports and exports, needs statistics. So does the prediction of various indices like inflation, unemployment rate, increase in a country's GDP, etc. Banking and insurance sectors also rely on statistical methods to analyze the risks that they are taking. How many insurance claims and for what amount are they going to have, etc. We already see applications of statistics in biology and medicine in our daily life to test how successful a vaccine is, whether any of its counter effects are not really due to the vaccine but could occur randomly anyway, etc needs the use of statistics. Environmental studies also rely on statistics. Without them, we cannot, for example, study how fast global warming is occurring and what the consequences are going to be. All these are done via complex computer simulations using mathematical and statistical models. Finally, social sciences like education, sociology, psychology, they use statistics to analyze and interpret their results. Everything I have said so far about what a statistician does is encapsulated in the following quote by the famous statistician John Tucky. The best thing about being a statistician is that you get to play in everyone's background, in everyone's background. So the future of statistics cannot be any brighter. Google's chief economist, Hal Varian, said that the sexy job in the next 10 years will be statisticians, and I'm not kidding. The website www.careercast.com regularly presents the top 10 jobs, taking into account physical and emotional environment of the job, growth potential of the job, meaning how many jobs positions there are going to be in the future, income as well as growth potential of the income, stress within the job, and so on. In its most recent list of 2019, five out of 10 top jobs are directly related to mathematics and statistics. Data scientist ranks first, statistician ranks second, and in positions 8 through 10, we can see mathematicians, OR analysts, and actuaries. These jobs are also important in the business sector as well. The website of US News ranks statistician as the second best business job, and also ranks OR analysts and mathematicians at numbers 5 and 6, respectively. The future of these jobs looks very bright indeed. According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median pay of mathematicians is at the moment a little bit higher than $90,000.
meaning that 50% of mathematicians and statisticians are paid that amount or more. Furthermore, in the following decade, the number of mathematician and statistician jobs in the US are expected to rise by 33%. And in my slide, you can see relevant statistics about actuaries and operational research analysts. So make your right choice for your studies. Choose wisely. Study mathematics and statistics. Hello, I'm Associate Professor Nerkos Paspalis, course leader of the BSc with Honors in Computing program. I would like to discuss how computing could be a good fit for your studies and explain how our program at UCLan Cyprus will help you achieve your goals. First and foremost, our computing program offers excellent employability. The demand for computing specialists is very high, both in Cyprus and worldwide. At the same time, it is one of the fields which allows you to work remotely, seeking jobs in the international market while residing in Cyprus or anywhere else. Furthermore, Cyprus is gradually becoming an innovation hub, attracting world-renowned companies to operate in the country. Already many large and medium-sized software companies operate in Cyprus in areas such as telecommunications, computer gaming, online betting, financial services, and others. And of course, you are not constrained to Cyprus. With a degree recognized by the quality assurance agencies in Cyprus, the European Union, and the United Kingdom, you can seek employment in the international market. We already have a proven track with some of our graduates getting employed in some world-leading software companies. The second reason to study computing has to do with the development of viable skills. In our program, we work with real-world problems to build market-ready skills. We also put the development of practical skills front and center. Multiple modules in our program focus on problem solving, on critical thinking, and on the ability to research new topics. No doubt, our technology-driven world evolves very quickly. While your studies will start soon and conclude in just a couple of years, your journey in the workplace is expected to carry on for the next few decades. But how can you know what the demand will be like in the industry 10, 20, or 30 years from now? How will automation continue to affect job markets? Which professions are at highest risk? While this is very hard to predict, almost everyone seems to agree that the best investment is in developing your problem-solving skills. Such skills offer you the best protection as they are quite resilient and unlikely to be replaced by automation. Another reason to study computing is that it is a fun and satisfying subject. If you are like me and you like logic puzzles, then you will love many of the subjects we study in computing. Also, you will be satisfied to know that your creations, like a computer game or a mobile app or a business application, are used by many people, simplifying their life. At the same time, your potential user base is literally the whole world. Computing is surely a promising subject with many benefits. But why study computing at UCLan Cyprus? Our program is based on the significant experience of UCLan UK, which tailored it to meet the demands of the industry. For example, the game-specific modules, built heavily on the expertise of the staff with their employment in the UK's gaming industry, as well as on the feedback received from companies hiring our graduates. Second, our program is accredited by BCS, the British Computing Society, and our graduates get the title of Chartered IT Professional. Our program is also recognized in Cyprus by EDEC, the Cyprus Chamber of Engineers. Additionally, our program is designed to be relevant to real-world industry standards. As such, we have modules aligned with professional certificates from Cisco and the Linux Professional Institute. A great advantage for our students is that they can get international experience during their studies. Many of our students take paid summer internships in Europe through the IESTE and the Erasmus Plus programs. Very importantly, the program enjoys a strong team of highly research active academics. Our PhD, PhD qualified staff are trained to be effective educators. They all have the title of Fellow or Associate Fellow of the Higher Education Academy of the United Kingdom. Furthermore, we have an excellent staff student ratio, which means that we can apply a highly personalized, student centered approach in our teaching and learning. 
Hello, I am Dr. Andre Bigi, Deputy Course Leader of BSc in Computing. The program has a core of fundamental computing modules, as well as electives, which allow you to specialize in software engineering, computer games development, or computer network technology. The program takes a hands-on approach with nearly all modules featuring practical elements. The first two years are common to all students, while years three and four consist of compulsory and elective modules. There is no requirement for knowledge of programming prior to entering the program. Instead, in year one, specially designed modules gradually introduce you to the foundations of programming. Core modules cover the fundamental concepts of computer systems and security, while additional modules enhance your study and research skills. In year two, you will cover topics related to each of the three specializations, including programming for the internet and the web. From year three onwards, elective modules allow you to specialize, while compulsory modules develop your professional skills, preparing you for the modern workplace environment. Also in year four, you will design and deliver your final year project to obtain a bachelor's degree with honors. The first specialization is software engineering. If you are passionate about technology and you want to develop the skills and knowledge required for designing new applications, then pursuing studies in this specialization is the right option. You will engage with a variety of programming languages, tools, and methodologies, the same ones used in the industry, which means you will be highly employable even before you graduate. Hello, I am Dr. Luis Nisiotis, Deputy Course Leader for the program. Computer game specialization enables you to take your passion for computer games to the next level. You will achieve this by learning important computing concepts such as programming, computer graphics and artificial intelligence to implement your creative thinking and produce exciting games. You will also have opportunity to engage in extracurricular activities, research projects and internships and participate in competitions to further develop your skills and develop a strong portfolio. The Network Technology Electives offers an opportunity to study the fascinating world of computer networks and security and explore the latest development in the fields. The skills that you will gain from the specific electives are already in high demand and will continue to be due to the cybersecurity sector facing a significant skills gap and because of the emerging technological areas like the Internet of Things and cloud computing having demand in networking and security professionals. In terms of course effectiveness, our main product is, of course, our graduates. And while our first batch of students graduated only five years ago, we have many reasons to be proud of their successes already. Our students have received awards from programming, innovation and entrepreneurship competitions and multiple merit-based scholarships from public bodies in Cyprus. Many of our students continue to postgraduate degrees either at Euclid Cyprus or other prestigious universities in Europe and the United Kingdom. Our program has been successful in securing summer internships too. Last and perhaps most importantly, our graduates have an excellent employability record where many of them have landed jobs in top-ranked software companies in Cyprus and across Europe. A career is a long journey and your university studies are just the beginning. Our PSC program in computing is tailored to help you take the first steps and build the foundations which will accompany you all the way to meeting your professional goals. At UCLAN Cyprus, you can expect a disciplined environment, a great team of attending educators, personalized teaching and learning, and a modern industry-oriented curriculum. If you are interested to learn more about our program, please get in touch. I and my colleagues are happy to discuss how our program can help you meet your professional goals. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us today for this online event by the University of Central Lancashire, Cyprus. This presentation is about our BSc Web Design and Development course. I am Dr. Christos Karpasidis and I'm the course leader of this course. For any additional information or questions, you can contact me on ccarpasidis1 at uclan.ac.uk. BSc Web Design and Development is a multidisciplinary course that offers specializations in a number of different digital media emerging subjects including and not limited to web design, web development, user experience and user interface design, graphic design, video production and animation. In a few words, and as I will be explaining in a few minutes, during the course, students are getting knowledge and skills for creating responsive web content that is viewable and adapts on any kind of display and web browser. 
Starting with web design, after successful completion of their studies, students will be able to design usable and professional looking websites and web applications with the use of HTML and CSS. HTML, that stands for Hypertext Markup Language, is the standard markup language for documents designed to be displayed in web browsers. CSS, on the other hand, is a style sheet language that is responsible for giving styles and appearance to those documents that are written in HTML. Together, these two widely known languages will help students design professional looking websites and web applications. Next is the web development specialization. Through modules related to web development, students will be able to combine HTML and CSS with other programming languages in order to start building and maintaining more interactive websites and web applications that are not just informative. Important programming and scripting languages that students learn during the course include JavaScript, which allows us making web page and web application functions that increase the interactivity between the website and the user, and PHP, which is a scripting language that is used to manage dynamic content, databases, or even entire e-commerce sites. Next are the UX and UI specializations. This one is one of the components that makes this course unique and original. Besides from developing and designing a website that looks and performs well, nowadays it is also important for users to have a good, trustworthy and enjoyable experience while navigating. This is what makes a website stand out nowadays and this is what makes users keep visiting and using the same websites again and again instead of looking for alternatives. User experience and user interface design concern processes that involve and bring the end user of any web application at the very center of the design and the development processes. By studying the end users and their needs before the design and the development of any website, students create prototypes, personas, mockups, activity flows, and user journeys that can guarantee the perfect user experience while also maximizing the usability of the final products. Graphic design now is one of the most popular specializations of this course. Through our state-of-the-art facilities, workstations, and our up-to-date and industry-informed curriculum, our web design and development students are gaining skills on creating aesthetically pleasing visual content to communicate messages. By using industry standard software, including and not limited to Adobe Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator, students learn how to create and edit raster graphics and digital images such as JPEGs, GIFs, and PNGs. They also learn how to create high resolution digital illustrations and vector graphics that can be used for both print and digital purposes. Next, through a series of video production and post-production modules, students learn how to plan, shoot, and produce professional video content for TV, home, video, or for the web. Through their studies, they get the opportunity to get familiar with professional video production equipment such as video cameras, microphones, and lighting equipment, and learn how to record professional-looking footage. In addition, by using industry standard software such as Adobe Premiere and After Effects, Students learn how to manipulate, arrange, and add special effects on pre-recorded video footage in order to produce video content for almost any purpose and use. Last but not least, the animation specialization allows web design and development students work with moving images and graphics to produce multimedia content. Students get familiar with 2D animation techniques and processes, and they produce two-dimensional animation in keyframe sequences that are used for creating animated movies, cartoons, marketing videos, and much more. Overall, the BSc Web Design and Development course is a four-year course. I will now go through each year and explain in a few words the main purposes of the offered modules. During the first year, students are registered in three core modules and two English modules. The first and most important core module is our Introduction to Audiovisual Technologies module, through which students practice image manipulation, audio production, and video production. This will give our students the ability to test their interests and skills, which will be helpful in order for them to be able to choose between the second year's optional modules. Moreover, through the Internet Fundamental module, students are taught the fundamentals of the Internet, its history, and its users, with a special focus on websites, applications, and digital marketing. The second year of the course consists of three compulsory modules, while students get the chance to also select two optional ones. The compulsory modules include web design and user experience, 
contextual studies, and computer graphics. During the web design and UX module, students start designing and developing their first websites and web applications with a special focus on UX and responsiveness. The contextual studies module, on the other hand, provides knowledge and deeper understanding of up-to-date topics and processes related to digital media, such as social media, internet security, media management, and professional practice. Last but not least, the computer graphics compulsory module is responsible for getting the students involved with graphic design principles and help them develop graphic design skills through software, including Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. As mentioned earlier, besides the compulsory modules, in their second year, students have the opportunity to choose two optional modules between multimedia production, video production, audio production, and web development. The third year of the course consists of two compulsory modules, while students get the chance to select two optional modules as well. Year three is a crucial year, since students are starting getting involved with various internship and industry work opportunities. The idea here is to help students develop a professional portfolio during their studies while also getting experience through real industry projects, real clients and internships that are now slowly, slowly becoming part of their assessment. The optional modules of the third year of the BSc Web Design and Development course include video post-production, code for design, professional practice and data-driven applications. The fourth and final year of the course is responsible to get our students ready to face the real challenges of the industry. This year consists of three compulsory modules. These modules are portfolio projects, user experience design, and enterprise development and production. Throughout these modules, students are working on various group and individual projects, with each one of them getting responsibilities related to their interests and individual specializations. Finally, during the final year, students have the opportunity to select an optional module between work as practice and research project. Through the work as pra practice module, Students have the opportunity to get employed by a real company and get assessed based on their performance. On the other hand, the research project module is mostly suitable for students who are willing to improve their research skills and intend to continue their studies with a master's degree or a PhD. Now, regarding employment opportunities, it is internationally accepted that careers in digital media are now growing faster than ever. Down the street, across the country and around the world, Employers are seeking skilled digital media writers, marketeers, designers, developers, and producers to help them get the word out in a crowded communications marketplace. This is why most of our students end up working in the industry even before graduating. It is also predicted that employment in the digital media arena will continue expanding in the future and rise an estimated 6% by 2024. Now, why are digital media specialists so employable? This is because digital media specialists can work in film, television, finance, marketing, sales, healthcare, education, nonprofits, and in any other type of organization or institution. They can be graphic designers, they can be web designers, web developers, video editors, they can be animators, digital marketeers, and offer expertise that a modern organization needs in order to remain competitive. Can you imagine a modern company without a website or some sort of web presence? I don't think so. Now, above all, digital media specialists are creative and they know how to tell a convincing story in a current way. Websites, digital images, video and animation simply exist as tools for communicating that story. All these mean that in order to study the BSc Web Design and Development course, you will have to be a creative individual that loves working on projects that require the spark of imagination and creativity. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. I'm Dr. Christos Karpasidis, and you can contact me directly at ccarpasidis1 at uclan.ac.uk. Goodbye. Hello. My name is Marios Draspopoulos. I am the course leader of the Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical and Electronic Engineering at UCLAN Cyprus. I would like to start this presentation by talking to you about the reasons why someone would choose to become an electrical and electronic engineer. First of all, it is a very wide field of study with lots of opportunity, as it includes much variety and very high employability rates available in diverse fields like telecommunication, IT, 
electronics, electrical power, energy generation and distribution, computer engineering and networks, renewable energy sy systems, robotics, and many, many others. Also, it gives you the knowledge and the skills to even explore other employment opportunities in your life. You might choose in your life to switch career. Uh, engineering gives you those transferable skills like mathematics, statistics, programming, project management that allow you to do so. Electrical and electronic engineering is possibly one of the highest researched uh, areas worldwide. Uh, it is a very good choice for someone who might want to become a researcher later on in his or her life. Secondly, and equally important, is it is a discipline that gives you job security. It has very high employability rates these days. It is a discipline which is very big and very wide, and it gets bigger and wider every day with new opportunities arising all the time following the technological developments. It is also a discipline that allows you to find job abroad very easily and even start your own business. Now, let's talk a little bit about the program and why you should come at Uplan Cyprus to become an electrical and electronic engineer. First of all, it is an accredited and internationally recognized program. It has been built according to the requirements of the Cyprus professional body, the technical professional body, uh, the EDEC. It has been recognized by EDEC and our graduates qualified to register with it either as electrical engineers, electronic engineers, or both, depending on the choices they make during their studies. In fact, all our graduates who have applied to EDEC are already registered with it. Secondly, is built according to the requirements of Institution of Engineering and Technology, which is an international professional body, which gives it an extra international recognition. Now, our program is modern and it's very attractive. It aims to provide a comprehensive overview of all the many of the many topics related to electrical and electronic engineering, allowing the students to develop a holistic and comprehensive knowledge in the field and enable them to work or further specialize, maybe through a postgraduate degree later on, in any of those topics when they graduate. We put the emphasis on two highly researched and highly employable areas, such as the telecommunications and mobile technologies or the renewable and sustainable energy systems. Now, the teaching philosophy and learning at Euclid Cyprus includes the theoretical background, the theory, and much of practical work in order to equip the students with the high level technical skills and make them more competitive in the job market. And this job market could be the industry, it could be the commercial sector, it could be research, it could be the academia. A few words about the structure of the program. The program is four years long. Uh, the first three years are, are common for all the students with all the modules being compulsory so that students establish a very good understanding and knowledge uh, and also practical skills about the different topics in electrical and electronic engineering so that they can make their best choice in their final fourth year. Year one aims to make a smooth transition from high school and equip the students with the necessary uh, required background skills like mathematics, programming, and electrical engineering principles. In year two uh, is where we start looking into electronics. We do analog electronics, digital electronics, instrumentation, electrical engineering physics, such as electromagnetism, optoelectronics, semiconductors, and we also do some further maths and statistics. In year three, it's about systems. Um, we consolidate the knowledge that we have gathered in year one and year two in order to study, evaluate, and design uh, systems like digital, control, power, communication, and electronic systems. So by the end of year three, we have a comprehensive knowledge about all the topics in electrical electronic engineering, and we go to the final year where we specialize. Uh, students get to choose between telecoms or renewable energy sources or a combination of the two, or they can make a free choice based on the, what they have liked in the previous years. Now, as I said, the emphasis is put on the development of the students' practical skill set in addition to providing them the theoretical knowledge, because we believe that in this way we make them more competitive in the job market. That's why all our modules include practical work in modern high-tech laboratories 
for them to have a unique hands-on experience. This is one of the reasons that UCLan Cyprus is the only university of Cyprus in Cyprus that uh, have uh, that is offering a Bachelor of Engineering rather than a Bachelor of Science, because in BEng the emphasis is more on the practical aspect, which is more important in engineering. There are lots of opportunities for industrial placements and internships for the students uh, in order for them to get closer to the industry and experience the real world. There is even an optional industrial placement year offered at the end of year three. So when they finish year three, students get to choose whether they would like to spend the year out, go to the industry, work like professionals, and come back more mature in order to finish their degree. In, in some way, this gives them a, a strategic advantage when they graduate because they carry some additional experience, which is very important in finding their first employment. Now, to summarize the advantages of the program, as I said, the emphasis is on the practical experience. The program is recognized professionally by EDEC and also by uh, the Institution of Engineering and Technology. There are lots of opportunities for industrial placement and internships, uh, both nationally and internationally. We are very close to the industry as we employ problems and scenarios from the industry from multiple domains. And we do that either through industrial visits or by having guest lectures by industry professionals. All our staff is qualified, the resident staff, all of them have a, a PhD and uh, the associated staff either has a PhD or uh, they carry long uh, experience from the industry. Finally, the students have a unique opportunity to participate and carry out uh, activities in research and industrial projects of the university and also participate in various other extracurricular activities such as competition, conferences, and many, many others. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Kalipso Yordanu. I'm going to present the BSc Psychology program with my colleague, Dr. Milica Nikiforou. The BSc Psychology program it's a four-year program leading to a double award degree, a degree from the University of Central Lancashire in the UK and a degree from Uclan Cyprus University. The degree is accredited by the British Psychological Society in the UK. The academics of the program have expertise in different areas in psychology with strong academic background from universities in the United States, United Kingdom and Europe. The academics are research active, publishing their work in international peer-reviewed journals, contributing in the scientific knowledge in the field of psychology at the international level, and participating in several international projects, such as projects funded by the European Commission and by local organizations, enabling them to offer evidence-based teaching experience to students and opportunities for them to engage in research, developing their research skills. The program aims to provide students with the knowledge and skills required by the British Psychological Society. It enables students to embark on a journey to become professional psychologists in Cyprus and internationally. It provides an up-to-date curriculum in psychology, which emphasizes the development of skills and knowledge related to the scientific and empirical aspects of the curriculum, but also an appreciation of how this can be applied in the real world. It promotes the development of an understanding of human thinking and behavior, as well as the development of a range of skills which are required in several career paths. The development of skills such as critical thinking and teamwork skills will have a positive impact not only on graduates' careers, but also on their individual and social well-being. My name is Milica Nikiforou and I am a lecturer in psychology. We will continue the presentation with why you should choose PSC Psychology at UCLan Cyprus. Because the course is accredited by the British Psychological Society, which is the representative body for psychology and psychologists in the UK and is responsible for the promotion of excellence and ethical practice in the science, education and application of the discipline because the course offers an up-to-date curriculum with a range of compulsory and optional modules 
that cover all the core domains in the psychology field. Also, the course can enhance your employability skills through the curriculum and in addition includes a placement module with 40 hours of practice in a partner organization. And last but not least, your studies will result in a double award degree with the University of Central Lancashire in Preston at the UK. Let's have an overview of the programme. The programme covers different domains in psychology, such as conceptual and historical issues in psychology, social and developmental psychology, physiological and cognitive psychology, individual differences and research methods in psychology, quantitative and qualitative methods. In addition, students can acquire knowledge on other domains in psychology, such as educational psychology, clinical psychology, forensic, organizational psychology, and counseling psychology. Assessment within the modules involves one or more of the following. So we can have examinations, multiple choice questions, or unseen essay type questions, and coursework, reports of empirical investigations, and individual or group presentations. All the teaching staff adopt the student-centered approach with aim to respond to the different needs of all students. The teaching staff engage the students through different teaching and learning methods, such as tutorials, case studies discussions, role play projects, group discussions, and hands-on activities. We are also organizing seminars, workshops, and practical laboratory sessions. We are organizing invited guest lectures from professionals and field trips. We are aiming to provide students with the knowledge to apply multiple perspectives to psychological issues, be able to integrate ideas from across psychology and to apply these to relevant issues and real world problems with due consideration of acting safely and ethically. The students also will be able to employ evidence-based reasoning and use different methods and psychological tools. The students will be able to critically evaluate theory and research in methodology, and the students will be able to reflect on their own personal development. The psychology course has its own lab, which is called the Cognition and Development Lab. The lab includes the psychology observation suite. It is an observation room with a mirror wall. It is equipped with video and audio recording equipment with a side room from which to observe. Teaching sessions and experiments can take place at the lab. The practical laboratory sessions now can take place at the computer labs, in the specialized computer lab and at the Cisco networking lab. The students can also have the opportunity to have access to online resources, books, and electronic books. In addition, students have the opportunity to attend internships either during the summer or during their studies. We have a lot of local and international partners for this. So we have a partnership with Brescia's Clinic, the Cyprus Red Cross, the Young Gamblers Educational Trust, the White Gum, which is located in London, the Larnaca Anti-Drug Association, PASIGAP, the Counseling Center Gimonas, and Mesogios, the Hope for Children, and SPAVO. At the end of the course, students will not only attain knowledge and understanding on different domains in psychology, but they will also attain subject-specific skills so the students will be able to generate research questions and use appropriate methods to gather and analyze the data. Also, students will all obtain thinking skills, so they will be able to critically evaluate the published literature, and they will attain other skills relevant to employability and personal development. Thank you for your attention, and if you need further information, you can contact us directly. Hi everyone, my name is Evstathios Christodoulidis. I am a lecturer and the course leader for the Bachelor of Science with Honours in Sport and Exercise Science at UCLan Cyprus. I understand the key decisions about what to study at university and what to do after graduating from university sometimes can be overwhelming. However, 
It does not have to be such a daunting and confusing task. A well-informed decision that reflects your interests and skills will help save you significant time and effort in the future and can help you to stand out in a highly competitive job market. Now, if you have a passion for sport and physical activity, why not turn it into an expert understanding of human movement with a sport and exercise science degree, all the way from the peak of elite performance to the fundamental health benefits of exercise? Just think about it. Whether it's in the local park or on the world stage, sport and physical activity are incredibly powerful. Improving sporting performance to help individuals achieve their personal potential could mean turning a great athlete into a global star, but it can also mean helping a patient work their way out of chronic conditions, or simply helping an individual getting on board on his or her physical literacy journey. This course offers you the tools to make that kind of impact. Today, I will try to give you an insight into the course of sport and exercise science at UCLan Cyprus and briefly describe what each academic year entails in terms of theory, training and experiences. Sport and exercise science is the application of scientific principles to the promotion, maintenance and enhancement of sport and exercise related behaviours. It is fast becoming one of the most popular subjects to study at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. Sport and exercise science aims to answer questions such as how does the human body respond to exercise? How can professional athletes maximize potential? What are the health benefits of regular activity? How do psychological factors influence sport and exercise performance? Our undergraduate sport and exercise science degree is structured around the three core elements of sport and exercise science, biomechanics, physiology and psychology. A graduate in sport and exercise science would be expected to have a broad knowledge base covering all three of these aspects and how they interact in both sport performance and health related exercise. In addition to the above, this program of studies provides a focus on physical education for those interested to pursue a career promoting physical activity through the education sector. During the four years of the course, the student will go through a range of modules that draw from physiology, psychology, biomechanics and physical education, providing an in-depth understanding of the human body, the human condition, the mechanics of human movement and the importance of physical literacy. As such, it's a multidisciplinary course, which allows you to focus on modules in either health and fitness, performance or physical education. Whichever focus you choose, you will find that it's a hands-on degree which will often take you out of the classroom and into either the lab or the sporting facilities. You may also undertake work experience with one of our industry partners as a part of your studies. Work with sport organizations in Cyprus and build vital experience with placement and internship opportunities. Teams under the Cyprus Football Association, the Cyprus Anti-Doping Authority, the Pan-Cyprian Footballers Association, various health and fitness centers and private schools are just a few of our partners. You will also tackle a research project and deep dive into an area of sport and exercise science that interests you the most. So let us start with year one. In this year, students will enter the world of sports science smoothly. They will get a close look at the roots and subsequent development of the modern sport from a sociological and pedagogical perspective and overview the principles and theory of effective sport and physical exercise delivery. They will be provided with fundamental knowledge and understanding of key aspects of biomechanics and movement mechanics in sport and the musculoskeletal system. Moreover, modules of the English language will enable them to function effectively in an English speaking academic environment and optional modules such as academic writing will raise students' awareness of academic writing skills at the higher education level. Year two is the year with no options. The students will be introduced to the branches of sports science. This year, 
will cover a variety of contemporary topics within sport and exercise psychology, kinematics and kinetics in the context of sports science, analysis of motion in a sporting context, the principles of muscle and skeletal physiology, neurology, endocrinology, immunology, and biochemical principles related to exercise, performance, and health. They will also take their first steps into the research processes and develop skills in presenting argumentation by utilizing supporting evidence. Also, will be introduced to basic statistical techniques and principles. In this same year, students will develop an understanding of the principles of training necessary to lead an effective and safe gym-based exercise session and the skills needed to work effectively and professionally with a range of clients through the use of relevant advice, goal setting, data collection, and monitoring. Moving into year three, the student will already possess a good level of knowledge in regards to sports science. Therefore, a more independent and demanding approach to teaching and learning will be implemented. The three branches of sports science remain intact, but enhanced. So sport and exercise psychology, sport biomechanics, and applied physiology are the core modules. In addition to those, the student will have the opportunity to choose another two modules from a list of options. Therefore, each student has a choice to focus on an area of interest. Just a few examples are applied principles and techniques in sports, which focuses on teaching physical education, performance nutrition, sport injuries and injury prevention, advanced principles of exercise and training. It should be noted that this year, the students will be also able to start with their work placement. In the fourth and final year, students are expected to begin work independently under limited supervision in order to develop and demonstrate their academic skills and abilities. That is why a double research project, or a thesis if you prefer, is provided as the only compulsory module enabling students to conduct a major piece of independent research. Students, besides that, should choose another four modules from the list of options. These choices can be a continuation of the focus from the previous year. Thus, their choices, again, are surrounding modules related to physical education and teaching, training prescription for athletes, exercise referral, psychology, biomechanics, and again, they will have the opportunity to undergo work placement. I hope that this brief session has helped to inform you about what we're doing here at the Bachelor course in Sport and Exercise Science at UCLAN Cyprus. If you need further information, please contact me at this email. Thank you very much for your attention. My name is Maria Resti and I am the Senior Student Recruitment Officer at UCLAN Cyprus. I will just share my presentation in which uh, we will be going through the application procedure and any other general information regarding the admissions process uh, to UCLAN Cyprus. Okay, how to apply? It's a very uh, straightforward and simple procedure. Uh, and of course, our university advisors will be, guide, will be guiding you throughout the procedure. And uh, you will be taken step by step in order to finalize the whole procedure and become one of our students. You will first of all need to complete uh, the application form, which can be found on our website, either as a PDF format file or um, simply complete the online application form that we have. In any case, you can always email us on the general admissions email, which can be found um, at the bottom of the slide, and you can make a note of it. So um, you can email us and we will email you back the PDF uh, application form. Now, for the undergraduate applicants, we will need to have the school living certificate and the mark sheet. 
as well as the English language qualification certificate, which can be anything um, such as IELTS or IGCSE or TOEFL or any other equivalent. If you're not sure whether we can accept your uh, certificate, you can always email it to us. We will evaluate it and we will get back to you uh, with the decision of the admissions department whether this document can be accepted or not. In any case, if the qualifications that uh, you're currently holding cannot be accepted by the admissions department, you can always take our own uh, English language test, which is also internationally recognized. And uh, we arrange accordingly and uh, as per your availability in order to take the test online even. Uh, along with the previously mentioned documents, we will also need to have your ID card or your passport copy. Now, for the postgraduate applicants, we need uh, what we have previously said about the undergraduate applicants, plus a few more documents, such as the bachelor degree, as well as the transcripts, uh, your personal statement, uh, your CV, and two reference letters sent to us directly by your referees. The application uh, will cost 50 euro, that is the application fee, and it's non-refundable. The payment methods uh, will be discussed with you, uh, with the advisors of the university, and they will be guiding you, as I said, step by step in order to uh, successfully make your payment and uh, being able to apply and evaluate your application. All of the documents will need to be emailed to your university advisor or to the general admissions email at admissions at uclancypress.ac.cy. Now, about the entry requirements. For the undergraduate programs, we will require from the applicant to have a high school living certificate, such as uh, the Apolitirion, if we're talking for local students in Cyprus or in Greece. And for international students, we can accept the A-levels, uh, the IB or any other equivalent. We know that in each country there is a different certificate, uh, the equivalencies all over the world are different. So if you have questions and you're not sure whether we can accept uh, your qualification or not, as I said, you can just email us and we will get back to you with, uh, with the evaluation. Um, we will also need the English language qualification, the IGCSEs or the IELTS, and also depending on the course that you will be choosing to study, um, there is an entry requirement, a specific entry requirement uh, and a specific mark that we require in order to be admitted. For the postgraduate programs, we will need uh, the applicant to have a bachelor degree or equivalent. Uh, it will have to be, uh, if we're talking about UK bachelors, it will need to be a UK lower second class bachelor degree. And uh, for any other country where uh, the marking system is different, we will make uh, the equivalency and we will inform you accordingly. Because in some countries, you know, there is a GPA or um, it's, uh, the, the mark is counted differently. And for all of the master programs, we will need to have an IELTS equivalent to 6.5. If you do not have IELTS, you can provide any other equivalent uh, uh, certificates or still take our own English test that we are providing at the university. And of course, we need to mention here that the language of instruction of all the programs and the assessment is in English. Now, for all of our international students, the non-EU students, um, we will need to uh, apply for a student visa. So, all non-EU students are required to apply for a student visa in order to study uh, at UCLan Cyprus. Again, uh, we have a few steps, so it's easier and uh, better for you to understand and to see that the procedure is not uh, complicated. Um, we will just simply take it step by step and I will explain it to you uh, right now as a summary though. Uh, I will not get into um, much details because anyway your university advisor will be guiding you uh, throughout the whole procedure. Step number one is to complete the application form that we were previously talking about which is um, 
application form in order to be admitted at the university and of course to pay the application fee. Now, as long as this application, um, as soon as this application fee will be paid and we will evaluate your documents, you will receive your offer letter. Then you will need to start collecting the documents for your student visa application. As soon as you collect all of the documents, if you have any questions and if you're not sure, you can always email them to your university advisor. We will check the documents and we will get back to you. Now, if you're sure that you have collected the correct documents, you can proceed with attesting them. Um, the attestations, though, vary from country to country. And therefore, depending on each document which is listed um, uh, on the list that you will be getting from your advisor, uh, there is a different attestation. So every country has a different attestation. Your university advisor will be giving you the list and will be giving you the places where you will need to be going to have your documents stamped and attested. Step number five is to email all of these documents to your university advisor with the stamps, with the attestations, in order for your advisor to check them and to make sure that everything is correct. We will never um, uh, leave you alone just to send any documents uh, which may be wrong and submit them to the migration with the risk of being uh, declined uh, and not get your, uh, your entry permit. So we make sure uh, as a university and as a department that all of the documents that you provide are correct and they will be accepted by the, uh, by the authorities, by the migration authorities. So once we confirm that the documents are correct, you can then move on to step six, which is the easy part here. And it means that you will need to send all of the documents that you have collected, originals and copies, um, depending on the country and depending on the, on the documents, will be uh, mailed to us, maybe by courier, to, um, to have them here in hard copies. Now, um, as a general guideline, um, you need to remember that all the applications uh, for the visa and all documents are evaluated by the Migration Department and the Ministry of Education. So as soon as uh, we have a decision and as soon as the decision is communicated directly to us and your university advisor is aware of the decision, we will inform you accordingly. about the scholarships? We do offer scholarships. We have the Academic Merit Scholarships, uh, we have Athletic Scholarships, and we have some other various uh, bursary and discounts. For the undergraduate scholarships, we are offering 40% and 50% on the original tuition fees always. And that depends on the mark that you have on your high school living certificate. So depending on your country, depending on your qualification, uh, you may be entitled to a 40 or a 50% scholarship. For our postgraduate students, um, they are entitled on, uh, on getting a 30% scholarship, up to 30% actually, and that is uh, upon a successful uh, course leader interview. This means that if a postgraduate student would also like to apply for a scholarship, we will need to arrange an interview with the course leader or even the head of school and uh, um, the, the, the course leader, the academic staff, will decide uh, the percentage that the student is entitled to. The athletic scholarships fall under some specific scholarship schemes. That is why we also have the Athletic Scholarship Committee, which uh, will evaluate your case, will evaluate your documents and any proof that uh, you're indeed an athlete and we will decide, this, the, the committee will decide and they will inform uh, our department whether you're entitled to any specific percentage or any specific discount as an athlete. Other bursaries and discounts that we are offering, which is uh, mostly for the local students, um, we are giving uh, some municipalities and communities bursaries some bursaries and discounts and special prizes to some companies and organizations that we have collaborations with. Uh, there is a large family bursaries. Uh, also, uh, we do have a discount for siblings and for our alumni, of course. 
And if you're not falling into, um, if you're not under any of these categories that have been previously mentioned, you can always inform us that you need to apply for a scholarship and that you need a scholarship and uh, you may be granted a special bursary. You will simply need to complete a scholarship application form. You can ask for this form um, your uh, university advisor. The form will be provided to you. You can complete it and the committee will have a look and decide on the amount uh, you will be entitled to. Now, this is the recruitment and the admissions department. Um, as you see here, uh, we're four people in the department. It's myself, it's uh, Mrs. Androniki Elena and Mrs. Andonia Ioannou, who are the student recruitment officers. And uh, these are the advisors that will be guiding you throughout the procedure, including myself. And we have our admissions officer, Ms. Katerina Petru, who is the officer who will be evaluating and issuing your offer letters. And in any case, you can either contact me via email or via phone or WhatsApp or Viber. Uh, it's also available or, or through our uh, general um, um, emails and phone numbers, which you can see on the right side of the slide. We have the admissions at uclancypress.ac.cy. We have the phone number of the university and of course our website. You can also find us on, uh, on different social media. It's uh, worth to check them. And if you would like to be more informed and if you would like to have a personalized session with one of our advisors, or with one of our course leaders, um, you have the chance to do so by booking your online information session. Uh, we're available every day, Monday to Friday from 9.30 until 4.30. So you can simply uh, book your session at your most convenient time. And one of our advisors will guide you on how to join the meeting. Through these uh, online information sessions, you will be able to find out how to apply at the British University of Cyprus. You will uh, discuss your career options and our programs of study with uh, the advisor or with the course leader. You will get into more details about the entry requirements. You will have a virtual tour of the campus and the award-winning facilities. Um, and as I said, you can also book the online session with the academic faculty. I would like to thank you for, um, for attending this webinar and uh, we do look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.